Well, here we are, sunshine. Episode All three right. already. How are you, mate? I know. Hiya, how are you doing? Very, you very interesting. Very interesting backdrop you've got there. Very interesting wall. background. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, well, I've done the fake one. I've done the Caribbean one. To be fair, I have got an amazing view of, of um, South Beach, Miami out there, but I... Um, I didn't think you'd want to see that. I've just stick it stick with a white wall. I mean, you know what you look like? You look like you've been arrested and you're about to do your mug shot. So you do one at the front, click. I'll turn to the side. <laughs> <laughs> click. <laughs> <laughs> look like, uh, yeah. <laughs> you're like Hugh yeah, Grant when he got that, caught with that this prostitute is become, that was a fella. This is gonna be, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, to be fair, he had the decency to be like that. Like he looked oh, gutted. Yeah. You oh, see, wasn't some, a f- there's a famous mugshot of Frank Sinatra. He just looks delighted. <laughs> but it wasn't a fella, was it? It was Eddie Murphy who got caught with the prostitute that was a man. It was him. He got caught with that. I uh, can't remember her name now. Did he? Yeah, it was a famous rumour about oh, Eddie Murphy got caught know with the prostitute. And he went, what? She's got a dick? Oh, I didn't know that. I was like, <laughs> sure you didn't know that, Eddie. <laughs> sure. Sure you didn't know that. Right, the I'm bollocks to, didn't give it away. I'm going to look, I'm gonna have to look that right up. Well, listen. Cheers, mate. Up. Well, opening the beer. Cheers yes. to you. I like to pour uh, it. Into, I, uh, let me just try and hide things. the can. One, it's uh, yeah, so so they don't get a logo. Two yeah. things: one, it's nine a.m., and two, uh, I'm in a hotel. Actually, I'm going to hide the logo of the hotel as well, so that they don't. don't they don't We're going to get a hotel sponsor, sponsor now. <laughs> this is our new thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm afraid I've let you down. This is a cup of coffee. No, but hey, don't worry about it. I'll represent us with a beer. Um, but yeah, we've got uh, Paddy McGuinness on Normally today, pal. I'll be on it. I know, I know. So when was the last time you saw... Oh, you see Paddy quite a bit, don't you? Because you work with him on Keith, uh, with Keith Lemon. Yeah, we've done some bits and bobs. I mean, um, yeah, we did um, we did like a music festival thing together last year. We did a Halloween one and we did one at Tartan Park in the summer. Um, I've done Celebrity Juice him numerous times, but I've known him for years ago. We went back a long time ago. Um, way, way back when, and we used to have a beer together, and um, same again, you know, I didn't see him for a bit, and then all of a sudden, he was there, popped up on my telly, and it was like, he's doing well, and then, look at him now, you yeah. know what I mean, it's, uh, yeah, no, I can't wait to speak yeah. to him, um, yeah, he's been, uh, he's, he's smashed it, hasn't he? Yeah, he's killing it, isn't he? Uh, so I'm trying to think, I haven't seen him for, I bumped, bumped into him a couple of years back, but before then, it was a long time ago, like, um, we were, he and I were roommates in 2004, Five on the match, the se- second second yes, uh, yes. episode of the match, second yeah. series of the match in um, uh, where we played the uh, football because it was sort of predated soccer aid. In fact, I think you were on the second the second one as well. Yes, I was. I just had my and, knee um, operation. Do you remember? Yes. And I, I got to play for about <laughs> yeah, seven or eight minutes. You, you, you could barely, you could oh. barely walk. And then when you got Saint on James's the pitch, you were like, I can't move. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, it was uh, with uh, Graham Taylor was our manager. But let's rest in peace, Graham Taylor. Yeah, oh, he was a great man. He was a great man. Uh, yeah, a great guy. Have you seen that footage of Graham Taylor um, where um, somebody's somebody's shouting racial abuse? I think he was at Watford. Someone shouting racial abuse at. I think it was either John Barnes or Luther Blissett, and um, just a fan. Yeah, you know, I say fan of uh, you know supporter. A dickhead. Let's call him what he is. A dickhead. And goes, and, yeah, Graham Taylor turns around and goes, "Excuse me." That's a human being you're talking to there. Can you leave that out? I can't remember exactly, but it was just like, that, that was years before anybody said anything really? like that. But he was a great man, Graham. Yeah, yeah. he was great. He was great. Yeah, obviously remember the documentary when he did the old, uh, do I not like orange? Against Holland when do he was, he was like England orange, manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought that was very funny. And it was amazing how you got it all on Mike. He's just, go, hey, see your mate over there. He just lost me my job. He just lost me my job, your yeah. mate on that pitch. You're talking about the referee. Yeah, I, I, know. <laughs> I know, I know. So uh, yeah, I think oh, Paddy's on his way Paddy's through. Um, no, I'm looking forward to today. Should be good. Right, Episode well, look, three. We, we can, we can, yeah, we can talk. Um, we can talk Graham with uh, with Paddy and everything when he comes in. Oh, oh, oh! Before we get Paddy on, uh, uh, thank you again. I have to say thank you to Manscaped for yeah. um, uh, sponsoring the first five episodes of our podcast. Did any, by the way, I, in the last one, I asked any, anyone on Twitter to send you pictures of a like a trimmed elephant. No, any blokes we're not sending them pictures. We're Did no one do it? No, Gutted. I don't want any Gutted. pictures. No. Please, somebody out there, please send Will a picture of your trimmed up bush if you're a bloke. No, love don't it. send me anything. Love Listen, it. use it. It's good for trimming <laughs> up. Use the ball deodorant. Use the toner. Valentine's Day's coming. You'll use it. 
Um, yeah, so make <laughs> right. your missus happy. Don't send them me. Oh. Hold on. I've got a. I've got a little... There's a script for Manscaped. Do you want, shall, shall I read the script? That, what is it? Like, we've we've never read a, like, a little advertising oh, do you know, Do it in before. your best voice-over voice, little... Ralph. You do it. Go on. Shall I do it voice-over voice? Do okay. It. Do your <clears> best. Go. go. Take it dead serious. <clears throat> Two Pints with Will and Ralph is brought to you by Manscaped, who's the best in men's below-the-waist grooming. Big news! Manscaped just released their new cologne scent to help you feel good and smell good all over and at all times. Who knew smelling this good could feel this good too? Manscaped is trusted by over 2 million men worldwide. Join the movement for all your below-the-waist grooming needs. Yeah, basically, get your balls to smell better. That's all it is. (laughs) Yeah, everyone benefits. Yeah, trim up, (laughs) smell up, happy Valentine's Day. And also, yeah, Yeah. um, you can get your discount. Oh, and you get a... Yeah, get a discount if you uh, go to the website manscaped.com and uh, you, you put our code in, which is two pints, all spelled out in capitals, T-W-O-P-I-N-T-S. That's right. Now, off. let's get right. Paddy on. Let's, let's have a minute of banter. Let's see what he's up to. Here we go. There yeah. he is. Paddy's here. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, Paddy, you've nearly finished your beer already. You're supposed to start it when you arrive. <laughs> it's, it's weird, isn't it? It's as, it's as though we've done half an hour trying to set this up. <laughs> And, and I've done about four fucking pints in already. It's weird. It's, it's, don't, it's spooky. Don't, don't spoil the illusion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh. How are you, boys? Really well, pal. How are you, son? Very good. Where are you? I'm, I'm, in, I'm in, in Miami. Your home. I'm in, Ralph's in Miami. Oh. Of course he is. Of course he is. <laughs> fucking hell. Oh, no. you, how long have you been there, pal? Well, I, I, I live in... By NASA in Cape Canaveral, but I came down here a couple of days ago to to rescue, to pick up a dog that was rescuing from the Caribbean. She arrived yesterday. Amazing. Nice. I like that. Just as I were going to go in hard on you, you went, I rescue the dog. <laughs> yeah. I'm, to, I'm not I'm here on to... South Beach giving it tons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've had to rein it in. <laughs> yeah. I saw I moved you, over your here disappointed to, uh, face. You know, help, help the kids at the orphanage. <laughs> <you know. laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. There isn't even a dog. I've just had that prepared just in case. <laughs> Do you know what, Will? There's a, a good story. Uh, God, a few years back, there's a place in London called White City Hotel, and it's part of the Soho House chain. And it's a beautiful bar, restaurants, and all that kind of thing. Very fancy, very London. On top of that building, there's a rooftop swimming pool. There's a pool in right? there, Paddy. There's a swimming pool. This day, I had a meeting. I thought I'd go up there. It was middle of summer. I went up. It was like MTV grind. Pool, rooftop, sunshine. I look over, I spot some man there, long black hair, glistening, Gucci sunglasses on, shorts, Gucci sliders. It's Rafe, literally comes over. I went, how are you, Ralph? And I'm like, I said, what are you up to? He said, oh, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm going to move to America. I said, oh, why? He went, shit here, isn't it? <laughs> You're on a rooftop, <laughs> swimming pool, in the fucking sunshine. Shit here, isn't it? I'm like, yeah. It's shit for everyone else, but it's not shit for Ralph Little in a pair of Gucci sliders stood on top of a fucking building with a swimming pool. Yeah. <laughs> I think I might have been referring oh, so to the weather. Cool. It must have been the weather. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. But anyhow, oh, God. Is it doing, doing all right over there, pal? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just living it. I'm, I'm here in, because I didn't go come back home after the um, after I was filming. I was filming in the Caribbean. I'm, I'm in the Caribbean five months of the year at the moment. So, sorry. I know. <laughs> look at me. Look at me and Will. Just look at us. <laughs> And we've this got is the that. Only, this Fuck is the only time in my life I look more tan than Will. He's livid. Yeah. I've even put a warm light on my face to warm my face up so it looks so pale. <laughs> this is all natural Miami daylight, mate. <laughs> you're still a bit pixely, your screen, Will. I don't know if that's I don't... just my side. It might look all right at yours. You do. I thought it was your face. Yeah, I thought you had squares on your face. You're a bit pixely as well. <laughs> Listen, it's, it's the way it is now. Well, I was saying, I, I don't mind it, yeah. Yeah, it makes it, yeah, take your irons out the creases. I was going to say, I don't mind that, because it, it disguises a lot of things. That's why I've not got a light on above my head, otherwise it's fucking this just looks ridiculous. <laughs> hey, hey, you get I wanted to ask, light, light, I wanted to ask you about like, that. Whoa, Paddy, Paddy, whoa. listen. Will's getting a bit of a sunroof Grey, appearing. black. Will's getting a bit of a sunroof appearing, and I know that 
He's all right, Will. He's, he don't need anything. Hey, hey. Well, that's awesome. only because he spray painted the top of his fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> hey, fucking don't knock it. I tell you, a bit of the old psh, before you get out in the morning, it, it gives is you a bit fucking, of extra bounce. Is that fucking Banksy step? with his... With his <laughs> is that Banksy on the top of his head, Will? <laughs> so, no, seriously. So I, rem- I remember me and you talking about it, like yeah. talking about implants and how like we, you'd get it. Did you, ever, did you ever get them? Did you ever have them? Have a guess. Well, <laughs> well like I say... I mean, if it, I did, it, if I did, I'd have to keep the receipt. <laughs> like I say, it's pixelated, so it could go either answer. way. A good advert, but I tell you, I tell you who has had because you, you see loads of people, don't you? Like you know, when Wayne Rooney has it and what have you, they're all they're in the press and they say, "Oh, such a boy's had a, an ear tra- transplant." The best one I have seen in the flesh. It was that good. I even thought so. I'm going to get that done. I got the number of the surgeon, Jimmy Carr. Jimmy really? Carr's a hair transplant really? surgeon. Unbelievable. <laughs> You see his ears like an otter's pelt. It's like <laughs> that. And I went, cried. And he went, but he said, this fella doesn't advertise, doesn't do any of that. You know, he's not like, you know, when you see cricketer at the back at Daily Mirror giving it Shane Warne with fucking her like that. And you, you're right. None of that. He's like under radar. So, uh, but I'm telling you, you know, I actually looked at it, I thought, no, that is proper. Yeah. Do you know what made me laugh because though, I, Paddy? Is well, you went, you went, um, oh yeah, like, I'll tell you who's had a really good one, and I'll tell you what, best surgeon ever, Jimmy Carr. I was like, he's branching out. <laughs> Surely the comedy's <laughs> paying his bills already. Doesn't need to go into that. It's since the tax. He's having to <laughs> he's having to get another career <laughs> to pay it all. But, uh, it's um I think the thing with her transplants is and Will's a pr- prime candidate for this. Oh you God. get them done. You get them God. done. You know. You know what I'm saying is, you get it done when no one realizes you need it. Yeah. That's when they work the best. If you're totally bald, yeah, and then you come into work next day and you've got eight pubes on your head, everyone's <laughs> gone, "What's that?" Yeah. What's that? Yeah. Right. But if you've got a decent head of hair anyway, you, you're going a bit here or a little bit on top. Because I know a few lads who've got a good head of hair who work in the business. I won't say the names. And I was surprised they'd had an hair transplant. And they said, oh, we're a bit... And you, so you'd never question it. The hair just looks really good. So I think if you are thinking about it, you've got to do it before you actually get to the full-on bald stage. You know what I mean? Go on, name I'll, names. I think I'll stick with the no, spray for now. I can't, lads. I've already given... I've already... <laughs> <laughs> No, do the old berry from EastEnders and get, do the full, like, advertising and film it and all that oh, carry Will. on when, they, when he's doing it. He'll do it for nothing. Will, Will, Al, Alan Household from, from Corrie, you know, he's an old mate of both of ours and, and he's had it, like, he but he told me he was very happily like, oh, yeah, I just went to someone, they did it for me for free if I just set, showed showed everyone the results. It looks great. But the thing I is, yeah, Will, but, I know, I know yeah. that you're not afraid of getting a, a, a cheap freebie. Well, you know, yeah, but the, the thing is... No, we're, we're, the, Alan's had to get one done because he's only four foot. Everyone can see the top of his head. <laughs> we're all right. We're, we're tall. We can yeah. get away with it. That's yeah. why I very rarely bend over on TV. I'm always upright. <laughs> <laughs> Straight. So no one sees top. I saw that on the uh, I tell you what, Will, you could, you could get yours done, Will. And no one would have a clue. Obviously, they would know. We've just discussed it on, yeah, on your I'd podcast. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. I'm telling you, that's that's the time to have it done when you're uh, when you don't necessarily need it. I saw Alan Alsall, which is counterintuitive. But. Alan Alsall just had it done, and and you know, after you just had it done, your hair looks shite, and then it has to grow through and all that stuff. <laughs> and he had a cap on, and it was, it was at the horse racing. And I said, and he said, oh, I've, I've got this on because I just, I, had, I just had an air transplant. He took his cap off and I went, hey, Forrest Gump's been on. He wants his fucking hair back. It looked, it looked shocking. <laughs> <laughs> it looked, and he laughed his boy. He said, it's the best one I've had that. But, uh, but it looks great. It looks great. Yeah, that's what I mean. It's, you know, did he have it at the front or did he have it I on think top? He had, he had like a full head. Looks like fucking Brian oh. May now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Will, honestly, I'm sure, ask him. You can get a freebie. There'll be plenty who'll do it for you because you love oh, all God, that. I'm not, I'm not there yet. I'm going to cling on to this spray for a bit longer. <laughs> I'll t- tell you what, though, uh, Ralph, yours is looking a little bit thingy here, my Hey, friend. listen, my wing backs have been playing deep for years. <laughs> Don't worry about that. They're See, not... you could get them filled in there and no one would have a clue. It's been the same since I was 18. I'm not going to start worrying about it now. <laughs> 
Listen, anyway. Well, it's just, it's just, go on. Anyway, get into the chat because we've got you on now. We're not here to talk about fucking air all day. I thought that and, was it. Uh, that was it. Thanks for <laughs> coming on, were. Pat. See you in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> For any more hair transplant information, contact Mr. Beginner. Uh, no, it's, uh, it's supposed to be an informal chat, Will. We're not doing a Parkinson interview. Go on. No, no, but these things I want to know and these people want to know. Fucking hell. All right, Parky, crack on. Well, I'll what just, lager are you supping? No, I, well, I can't mention it because we've not got a lager sponsor yet, so I don't tell you what beer I'm drinking until we get well, a sponsor. He There's can, he can, it. Paddy, but he's refusing... <laughs> He's refusing on principle to mention the name because he's like, fuck them, they should sponsor us. And if they're not, I'm not going to talk about it. So we're now not talking about what beers we're drinking. Well, we're not talking about what beers we're drinking now, but if you're, if you're out and about, I think there's nothing nicer than an ice cold pint or red stripe. Oh, I enjoy a red, a red stripe, stripe. It's a mate. great beer. You, we don't see much of it, though. You don't see much of it, do you? It's a Jamaican lager. I have it when I go to Caribbean restaurants. You always have it there. A little bottle of Red Stripe with me Caribbean food. It's belting. Oh, lovely. Lovely stuff. Anyhow, go on. Carry no, on. I just, it was just um, just talking about general stuff uh, to start off with, about um, how it's been now, you know, with your kids and all that in lockdown. How's it going? How's family? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, well, you know what it's like. Uh, with kids, you know, everyone's onto this homeschooling and everything else. But personally, I think that's nigh on impossible. Anyone who's saying they're doing homeschooling from that first lockdown way back in March uh, 2020 to now is lying through their teeth because no one can keep that up. No one. So I think as long as the kids are happy and, you know, they're not sat in front of a bloody computer 24-7, then that's all you can do, you know. And they read books and everything else, and and that's it. But they've just started back last week, mine. Right. They've been off, uh, like I said, the first because when the first lockdown happened in March, everyone was kind of conditioned. I felt, you know, I was. I never went through my door for seventy days. You know, we had the news on constantly. Yeah. And you're a bit like, what is going on with the world? I remember the first time I went out for a walk with my kids, uh, my daughter picked up a rose to smell it on the side, and I went, whoa, what are you doing? <laughs> smell that, the corona will go up your nose. Yeah. And, hey, and bees, thinking, pass it. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what am I doing? You know what I mean? This is We're all getting conditioned now with this like fear. So I think if you're sensible, like you say, wash your hands, keep your social distance, wear a mask when you're out. If we'd have done that from the get-go, everybody... I don't think we'd have been in as bad a situation as we're in now, but obviously life isn't perfect and it didn't work out like that. So they they didn't go to school first time, then the schools opened again, they went back and then they've been off again since. But uh, they needed it. I noticed little changes within within them and I thought they're not getting getting the structure and the the right help they need. So so they they went back in. Uh, They only did nine till one. Uh, but already you can see they're improving and, and they're getting better again at different things and what have you. So, yeah, it's important. And that's the tricky thing, I think, when you've got kids in this pandemic. One side of you is thinking, well, you know, obviously you don't want anything bad to happen. You don't want them to pick up the virus and get ill and, and pass it on to everyone else. So you don't want to you don't want to go through all that. And on the other side, you've got to kind of look after them mentally as well, you yeah. know, because they... All kids, when, I think when the schools first shut in March, and I put myself to back to when I was a school kid, if I'd have been at school then, I'd have been like, yes, fantastic. Mm-hmm. But it soon becomes become, apparent that you can't go out play with your mates or you can't go mm-hmm. to someone's house or you can't yeah. do, get out on your bike. Yeah. So I think kids really felt it. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Because that initial, oh, good, we don't have to go in school quickly, W- yeah. disappear when you just sat in with your mum and dad yeah, all yeah. the time you know yeah. what was uh, like so, for 10 days isn't it two what weeks would, what would you like at school then pad was that was you like that then would you have been like get let's have it get out would you would you was you like was it was you always destined yeah. to be a comedian was you like life and soul at party at the school well, well I, I think i think at school when, when we're all similar ages and um i'm a bit older than you two but hey, hold on. when Fucking i was in school, hold on <laughs> hey, hey hey sorry 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 <laughs> what i meant to say is we all look similar all ages. right good 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 yeah thank but, you yeah. Uh, yeah. but uh when i was at school honestly it, the school never shut i don't care what were going on 
Russia could have invaded the UK <laughs> and would have still been in school. They never shut it. And now it feels like they shut every two minutes, you know, yeah. regardless of the bloody pandemic. But I was just kind of a regular lad, you know, like messing about, playing football, playing out with my mates, just the usual stuff, really. I was never a major class clown type of person, but I was always in and, evol- in and, and, and involved in that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. But I was never purposely acting up in front of the class and what have you to kind of get a laugh or anything like that. I'd always... The reason you start getting into, like, with comedy and what have you, I think when you're in certain social situations or you're working or whatever, I always had the ability to get a laugh without telling a joke. You know, you tell a story or I could always do that. So I knew I I could do that in different situations. And then I'd seen Peter do it, and I've spoken about this before, and he came off stage at a little club in Manchester called The Frog and Bucket. Mm. And he got 45 quid, and I was like... Fucking hell, I'm not earning that. I was looking at I was a labourer at the time on a building site, like grafting all day. Mm-hmm. And he was getting more money. He'd been on stage for 10 minutes, you know. And I'm, So that's what really actually got me thinking about it. I was like, financially, that seems like a no-brainer to me. So I did, um, there used to be a thing called the Newcastle Brown Ale Circuit. And it was all the student unions around the UK. And you never got paid. You just could do open spots at all different ones. And I went to, I think it was Lancaster University, my first one. And there's a guy uh, who was the compere. He's a well-known comedian round and poet around Manchester called Horvis Presley. And he was fantastic. And uh, when I finished on stage, he came on stage and said, well, he claims it's his first time. And I thought, oh, if he's saying that, I might be onto some of it, you know. So it just went like that, really. But there was no, definitely no ambitions to do anything with comedy or telly, full stop. Yeah, you know, the- up until kind of, Seeing Peter get that money, but there was a point, wasn't there? Because I know there's there was a, I, I, there's a because you can you can find it on YouTube and you can it's out there of you on God's gift, man oh man, yeah. Why? yeah. Now, how, how can well, you that, go from that just was, Aladdin so Bolton I, to get me on that man oh man with me boxer shorts on? No, well that was again when you think. So I worked at a leisure centre at the time, and um, we were all young in our twenties. Which one we was were it? All, Horwich Leisure Centre. Yeah. Was it? And, and, <laughs> yeah, it was. And and then you're all like in this thing where you go out at the weekend and you're in like this. I had a really good time in them days and it was like a nice tight knit group of people. And in the staff room this day, um, some casting thing must have sent them out to everywhere. There was a big notice saying uh, people wanted uh, for this new dating show. And me and the lad said, we'll apply for that. I'll be a bit of fun. So we went down to Granada in Manchester and uh, we did the. It wasn't. It wasn't a bloody audition. It was just you kind of sat and a researcher asked you a few questions and, he, and that was it. You went off. And then uh, I got the call saying, "Oh, you've made it through." None of the other lads had. So at the time, I'm going, "Yeah, that's right, losers. I've made it on. You haven't." But now I go, "Oh Jesus, why? Why me?" But when I did it and everything else, and, it, and obviously I weren't on telly or anything then. And I did have a, I did have a good laugh, and I met Claudia Wil- Winkleman. She was hosting it at the time, and then I've hosted stuff with Claudia years after. And I was like, God, you! When I first saw her, I'm like, you, I first met you. I had a pair of silk black boxer shorts on, <laughs> gyrated around fucking Granada in Manchester. And isn't it funny but, how uh, life comes full circle? <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> now every but, Saturday. <laughs> when, yeah, but when when I was hosting, take me out. For all those years, the lads have come on and they'd be shitting themselves. Even you don't care who the most best looking bloke ever, when they got in that lift, in rehearsals they're all right, but they suddenly changed. It, it, they got really nervous. And and they'd obviously say, Luke, we you look after us out there? We do this with that. And, and I always used to tell them, Luke, I go, Luke, you're on Saturday night ITV. It's a, it's a family show. It's doing really well. I went on. A twelve o'clock at night, fucking low rent <laughs> dating thing in a pair of black silk boxer shorts. So don't don't worry about it. You know it's not the be all and end all. And uh, and, and them are the things I think in life where you get to an age where you start looking back at things. You think, yeah, you know, at the time when it, I remember I was on one of these uh, before they were famous things. I'm like, fucking hell, where have they where have they brought that clip out from? In fact, I know where they brought it out from. One of the lads in Phoenix Knight, Steve Edge, who plays uh, 
one half of Les Alanos on the drums, he had it and he sent it into his mate who worked on one of them clip programs, and the rest is history. But no, I think, yeah, fucking why not? You know what I mean? It's just a bit of fun. And, and that's funny you should that you... say that because we actually have the clip and we're going to play it. Hold on, let me play it for you. <laughs> no, do it. Hey, uh, as if we'd I be know, allowed I to know anyway. I know you've not. I know you've not because it took us fucking 40 minutes to get to this day. I know you're not going to put, you're not going to be putting clips up. Fucking Jamie's having a coronary. Giving it, what? A clip? Hey, I'm sorry, I'm get, is that how it started for you then, acting wise? Was it Phoenix Nights with Peter Kay? Is, did, did he, is that how it started? Yeah, we did. Um, uh, was like a jobbing comedian at the time, and he, and he I don't know, it could, he did a thing. There used to be a thing on, um, I think it was on BBC Two on Sunday afternoon. It was called the Sunday Show, and he got yeah. given a little, a little part on that show, like. Uh, you know these bits were like when they do the after show in the jungle and they'll go to someone and they'll be stood in front of the screen talking about what's happened on the jungle that week. He like he had like a little role like that. He was only on it for about a minute every show. So that was his little foothold getting into telly. And then he got this uh Channel Four used to do a thing called Comedy Labs back in the day. And they give kind of unknown comedians a chance to to make a programme. And they were always on for about 20 minutes and what have you. And he did one called The Services. And that went on and it did all right for him. And it kind of went from there, really. And he sort of got um, that Peter K thing, which was a series. And within that Peter K thing was an episode called The Club, which was Phoenix Nights. Mm -hmm. That seemed to do the best out of all the, all the different ones he tried out. And that was that. Channel 4 kind of commissioned it. But the, the mad thing is, when we filmed Phoenix Nights, and you know what telly's like for, like, stop starting and everything else, we filmed it, finished. I went, went back working at the Leisure Centre, and it never, I don't, I think it was, like, nigh on two years before it came on TV. Really? So they kept it on the shelf for that long. So, like, for me, working at the Leisure Centre and what have you, I kind of went back to work and just totally forgot about it, really. Again, it was just a laugh. I did it. I was like, this is good, you know what I mean? You're making a telly programme and, oh, it's, you know, exciting and everything else. But that was that. And it, like I say, it never come on for, but for not, nine or two years. I, I want to ask, because a similar thing happened for, for me. So when, when I was um, 17, I did the, did the Royal Family with Caroline and Craig, right? And then they sat on that, not for two years, but they sat on it for about nine months before they broadcast it like way longer yeah. than you normally would. And I went back to uh, sixth form to, to finish my A-levels. Yeah. I, I had no fucking idea. And it was, and obviously the rest is history. It came out and, and that, that's great. But mm. for those few months when I was back at sixth form, I was going, I was, I don't know, it was really difficult to give a shit about anything else anymore because I was going, yeah. I've got this thing happening. It's on a shelf somewhere and hopefully it's yeah. going to change everything. I, I really yeah. found the waiting hard. Were, were, you, were you able to just sort of put it out of your mind or were you not at the um, leisure centre thinking, well, one well, day you, well, you guys will see, I'll be out of here? Well, I think if you, you were 17, now at 17, you like literally you can't wait for anything, can you, at that age? It's yeah. got to be instant. So you must have been like, that's all you were thinking about. And kind yeah, of when we did Phoenix Nights, I was around about uh, 37. About 26, 25, 20, 25, 26. <laughs> yeah. and, um, and then working at Leisure Centre and everything else, kind of like I had no, no kids, no responsibilities, uh, no house, no nothing. So I wasn't really yearning for that, to be honest. I was, I was just more like, oh, that were good. And, I, and, and, you know, I'm just writing this book at the minute. And um, one of the, when I was thinking about stuff from back then, one of the things really with Phoenix Nights was when when it first came about and Peter said about being in it, uh, was I thought, right, well, you can get on telly, which means you can get in, in my mind, you can go to the Ivy, you can get in bars for free and, and girls will be all over you. You know, that's kind of it. Then I'm like, that's telly for you. That's oh, let's that's be clear. I was also thinking that when I was 17. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was very much in my head as well. Yeah. So when we did Phoenix Nights and that didn't happen, I thought, <laughs> yeah. oh well, that that's that then. You know what yeah. I mean? So I was in a different mindset. But even when the first series had been on, it didn't do that well. To be honest, what Phoenix Nights' success came from. 
it was right at the time when uh, the big boom happened with DVDs and everyone were buying DVDs and you had all the DVD extras on there. And Phoenix Knights, and to be fair to Peter, he really goes to town and anything like that. And he crammed in so much unseen footage, commentaries, outtakes. That's what really set it off then. Everyone got talking about it and, and everything else. There were no Twitter or social media then. It was just all word of mouth. And then the second series came along and did really well then. You know what I mean? So it was off and running. But then he stopped and that was that. We were on to Pastures New. But, you know, that's telly for you. I was, you know, you mentioned Take Me Out before. You must have some stories of what's going on backstage there with them. Men and women and all that together, there must be some shagging going on, surely to Christ. Well, I remember uh, in, very, in very early years of, of uh, Take Me Out, uh, they didn't used to go to Fernando's, they'd go to Club Fernando's because right. we didn't have any budget back then. So it was just basically a bar in Manchester. And uh, this girl turned up on the day, uh, one of the producers were telling me, and she had a vibrator in a bag. <laughs> and he's like, Just in case you can't get what's, a what's this? What's this? <laughs> What's this? He said, oh, that's for us tonight. We're going to use that and everything. And when he hear stuff, I'm like, what? Because all all the girls on that I never series, met any girls like that. <laughs> it's like it's like when you're a kid and you read the adult magazine, you go, this never happens to me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, I've spilt this water all over my shirt. I'll have to take it off now. Yeah. <laughs> but it's... Um, yeah. Look at that. Ralph's gone up for a wank. <laughs> Mate, all that chat about the vibrator, I had to. I've got to plug my computer in. Sorry, go but, on. Uh, yeah, these, these tons and tons of stuff were, again, for me, I used to make a rule uh, with Take Me Out. I'd, I'd rehearse more with the lads because they were on their own. They were nervous. The girls, there's 30 of them together. They're having a good laugh. And I'd come on, I'd run through a few questions and I'd leave it then because I didn't want them to get too familiar with me when I'm on, when we're actually recording it so I could... It were all, you know, because a lot of it were ad libbed. I could just keep it fresh. Yeah. So I'd spend more time with the lads. So when I'd hear things, what had gone on, we're sleeping with, with each other and everything else. I'd be like, really? Huh? God, I never thought of that in a million years. But but that's young people, isn't it? That's what we did mm. back then. Exactly. You know, we're, I, well, I'm only going like that now because because I'm old. Yeah. But back then, I'd be like, yeah, that seems pretty standard. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but what we've done, I mean, I've seen you. I remember when we met, we used to meet in like the press club years ago. Do you remember we used to have a beer and all that in the press club? Oh, the press God. club. The you, press you, you, you club. Go what in, a you place go in and leave, it'd be daylight. You'd be like, what the fuck's happened? Because there's no windows yeah. downstairs. And then you come out and it, I mean, do you remember what it, it used to be like? It used to be at the same time, it was the most exclusive place in Manchester and the biggest shithole. How, how is that possible? <laughs> I, I, I honestly don't know how you two went on with it, but like, before I ever went in the press club, you'd hear about this place. Exactly what you just said there, Ralph. You'd hear about it. You'd see them queuing. You can't get in. It's very <laughs> this, that, and the other. It's, you know, you've got to be on the list and all that. And I'm like, I've got to get in this place. And we were filming Phoenix Nights at the time. So we're in Manchester. And this one night, someone said, I've got us in the press club. I was like, dupe, slappy chop, chop. Here we go. <laughs> I am on it. We are going to the press club. And I walked in. I was like, fuck me, it's the Rovers return. <laughs> it's literally. Mate, it's, it's the Phoenix <laughs> club. I was, I, oh, I was expecting it's the fucking like Phoenix China club. Whites or something. I was like, yeah. what's this? And it's a kind of really eclectic mix of people in there because you get like all those lot who were off, off the telly or theatre. Then you get kind of journalists who were totally off the clock and then a lot of gangsters. Yeah. It was like yeah. a proper mad bull. And they, uh, honestly, yeah. even though it's a weird mix of people, I never, ever, ever saw any trouble in there. Do, no. do you, remember they used to, you used to go to the bar and you'd order a beer and they'd give you a can of beer over the bar. One won't be yeah. a pint. They give yeah. you a can. Yeah. Red, when, red stripe, yeah. in fact. That's red why you love red That's stripe. where it comes they from. Used to not fact, I, I, I remember it. Yeah. I, I, remember, I remember the girl behind the bar, though. Every time I'd order a can of red stripe and I went to get it, she'd just get her tits out. Oh, what, what was that? What? what? She'd just what get was her tits that? out. I didn't get that. Yeah, she'd just go, there you are. And go, I give me a beer. I go, cheers. And off I go. Like, as though that's normal. <laughs> Wait, 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 wait. I'm, having, I'm going to have to take you back to that thing where you read the adult magazines as a kid and you go, that kind of thing never happens to me. And I'm going to say no, it again, I... that kind of thing never happens to me. How has this know, happened? But, 
that was the press club. It's just bonkers, <laughs> wasn't it? And, and what what's even madder about that is, I never batted an eyelid. I just went off, got on the karaoke, or did whatever you did there. You know what I mean? I was like normal. No wonder you played yeah, the yeah, red Never followed it. Up, never followed it up and got a little phone number, did you, Paddy? <laughs> no, no, honestly. No, 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 no. That's no, not your no, style, but, is it? No, no, no. Well, back back then, uh, <laughs> you know. I had, they were coming out of my pockets phone numbers. I couldn't put them anywhere else. I had like, no more phone numbers. No more. Uh, I'm not a machine. Yeah. But um, no, but yeah, that, it was a it was a, a good place that. No, but that's what I'm saying. Over the years, you know, you see people and you you, you come and go. And we had we had a bit of banter. As, you know, we used to have a few beers and that. And and then obviously I've, we've we've worked together a few times because um, obviously we're on yeah. celebrity juice and that. But you, you and uh, Keith Lemon, you, you did a lot of other stuff other than Celebrity Juice, didn't you? Because that's how it started with the the picture show. You did something for Comic Relief, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, Comic Relief used to do this thing called Let's Dance for Comic Relief. And uh, you basically, uh, I got this email. I forget who it was from at the time. I mean, like, bloody Richard Curtis, someone like that, someone mad. I'm like, what's he emailing for? And uh, it was saying they've got this new show and... Um, you, you can pick a dance from an iconic film and you just you just go on and do it. And uh, I thought, I thought, Dirty Dancing or Grease or something like that. Anyhow, I settled on Dirty Dancing. I didn't have a dance partner. So I just rang Lee up, Keith. And, um, and he was like, yeah, all right, I'll do it. And we did it. And it did so, so well that we kept getting mired about doing stuff like that. So we did a couple of pilots for ITV. And the pilot was basically a game show and then parts of the rounds would be clips of TV shows and films. But instead of being the actual TV shows, we'd reenact them. And uh, the commissioner at the time um, said, I'm not too keen on the game show, but I really like them film clips you do and what have you. Do you want to do something about that? Now, to be honest, that's what really we really wanted to do. You know, we didn't want to do the game show. We, that's what we, we were trying to crowbar that in. So they'd see it and they did. And they commissioned it. And we did two series. And they commissioned a third series. But again, classic TV. The budget went down. Yeah. And to make the show look half decent, because we never did, we didn't want to kind of do it in a, in a like, oh, we, we like a pants or, you know, we're using cardboard props and all. We wanted to try and get it looking as, as good as we could. And kind of all the cast and crew were sort of on the knees trying to work every hour God sends to make this money stretch. So when they said, we'll do another, but it's less budget again, we just, it was a tough decision because it's there on a plate for you, but we're like, well, we can't do it for that. And that was you know, that. People, but it's not, it's not gone away. To this, people listening to this who, you know, don't work in telly. So most people listening to this, this is something that, that, that we should grasp the industry up for. It happens all the time. You do a show, and then they go, so, sorry, we're going to have to give you less budget. Can you make it work? And you go, well, yeah. I mean, we'll ask the actors and the crew and everything. We'll ask them to do overtime yeah. and take less pay and stretch it out. And we'll do this yeah. and we'll cut that. And people will stay in shittier accommodation, all that kind of thing. That's it, you, And you stretch it and somehow, by a miracle, you make it work. And instead of them going, thank you, well done, that's great. Now you can have the, the budget back again. They go, yeah. oh, well, you made it work like that. Exactly. Let's take a bit more off. Exactly. Th there's no, exactly. You don't win. Exactly. It's so weird. It happens all it's the time. Like, it's, 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 you know, TV, TV, but at the end of the day, you know, it, it is show business, isn't it? And I suppose every business works like that. You know, yeah. and and but it's it's difficult when you when you're passionate about something and you really want to make it work. And you're thinking, God, it's there. Do I try and do it with a lesser budget? Because the budget wasn't about kind of paying me and me and Lee or anything like that. it. Was a we because me and Lee were our show, so we really wanted to put it all on screen. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, well, I did Ghostbusters, didn't I? I was in the end, that we, couldn't, we couldn't do that. I did, I did yeah, go. It was, oh, well, we had a laugh doing One of that. the funniest, we, we well, it was probably that. two or three of the funniest days of my life. I mean, to try, I don't know how we <laughs> yeah, got through we it. Had a good I don't laugh. know how the fuck we got through yeah. it. It was because all you had to do was. Well, you did, you did the, you did the, yeah, you did the live ones as well with us. We did the, oh, um, great, we did, yeah. uh, what's it called? The big outdoor the movie one fest. North. Uh, yeah, no, but what was the place called where we did? Oh, Chatham Park. Chatham Park. 
Yeah, and we did. Yeah, the, and then uh, we and did, then uh, did uh, Ali Ali Pale. Yeah, for the for the Halloween special, it was... we had a good laugh as well. How was oh. Will's American accent, Paddy? <laughs> Fucking he can't. Well, I tell you, it's infinitely better than than mine. <laughs> <laughs> infinitely better than mine. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. hell! I'll never forget. <laughs> one of my one of my the funniest bits I saw of um, of the um, Keith and Paddy picture show was when you did Basic Instinct. And uh, Keith Lemon, obviously Lee, was uh, oh, yeah. was being. <laughs> he was sat there with his legs crossed, and they were doing that scene when she's sort of being interviewed, Sharon Stone bit, and he all yeah. opens her legs, and she's got no knickers on, right? And it's and that's obviously their version of it was opens his legs, and he's just got a bit of ham, <laughs> a bit of ham stuck yeah. to his knickers, <laughs> and, and he goes, "Oh, what's that?" And he just goes, "A bit of ham." <laughs> I was crying. I had to pause it. But you know, it was just a bit of ham. Do you know what? It's, uh, I, I don't think I don't think they went out anywhere. But we filmed quite a few different things oh, that never know. went out anywhere. We did uh, we did brought back mountain, and we did um, ET as well. Yeah. Uh, but they just didn't have the legs to kind of put them in the series. But we still got them bits somewhere. I've no doubt we put them online at some so point. So funny. Oh God, so funny. Well, are we, how are you two going on uh, in the, in this in this profession? What we're all in? How are you? How are you going on when lockdown happened? Because obviously we all got mortgages and bills and everything else. And in our job, there's no there's no furlough as such. You know, it's the kind of job where when the going's good, it's going really good, and when it's not, that's it. You know what I mean? So how did you? Were, were you worried? Were you? Were you? Were you? Did you get scared? I did. Shit myself. Well, I was. It was. Um... It was shite yeah. fucking shit. I mean, I tell you, I'll be honest with you because I don't want to bring it down, but I had, it was fucking personally a terrible yeah. year for me last year. So do you know what it took? It took second yeah. fiddle. Usually, I'd be panicking, going fucking right. What am I going to do work wise? I've got to go and uh, got to go and shake yeah. the tree and catch apples. But when I lost my dad, my head fell off a bit. So I thought, well, you know, there's bigger fish yeah. to fry at the moment. Um, and uh, being in lockdown, that made that yeah. the, the, it made it even harder. Um, but you know, I think some. I think yeah. the, the thing that I've learned from this is there's a, there's a lot I can cope with. You know, what I mean, I used to stress a lot. If I was out of work for five minutes, I'd be like on my phone to my agent, "What's going on?" You know. But now I think, mm. you know, doing this helps. Doing a podcast and talking about stuff because you know, mentally yeah. drives you crack yeah. being in the house. And because we're all creatives, if you're not doing it, you, you're yeah. still thinking about it, and you, you've still got all this, you know, like energy going on. So I suppose I've learned now that mm. there's a lot more I can deal with, and I can, you know, there's other ways of, other ways of expressing yourself or doing other things. Because money is one part of it, but the other part of it as well is I've got to be creative. I've got to be doing something. I can't just sit, get up and do this yeah. day-to-day shit. So I suppose I've learned to. Yeah. I, I, I can cope a bit better than I thought I could. But as I said, it was shit. It was just a yeah. shit year. It's just been crap, hasn't it? How do you go, on, Ralph, out there? <clears throat> well, I, to be honest, I'm sort of the, the, the wrong person to ask about this because I, while everyone else has been struggling through a pandemic, I'm basically the luckiest guy in the world. In the Caribbean, got the bastard. Death in Paradise. I got Death in Paradise just before that, <laughs> and then so they went, yeah, we're, because it's on an island and we can sort of isolate and keep people je- relatively safe. We're still going to press ahead. So whilst everyone was else was like really struggling through lockdown i was swanning around the caribbean filming a tv show oh. and then I, and then i came to florida where there are no lockdown rules so it's not really affected me and also i haven't got kids oh. i haven't got kids so yeah. because and, and i'll tell you something i have never it's ever smug. ever been, been more stop, smug and happy. Stop with the digs, does it? yeah it i know i've digs. never been more smug and happy about not having oh. kids than when the pandemic hit do you know what i did before i went to the caribbean i played playstation i sat and watched telly sat in my pants on my house it was it was great i was having a great time and then i went to the caribbean so yeah when, when will got in touch about doing this and i said yeah i said i'm gonna be a bit tight for time i can do it this time and he went, oh it's a time difference because ralph's in the states and he might he might be a bit late when he i said he's no fucking kids <laughs> i said yeah. he can come on whenever he wants exactly yeah <laughs> Fair enough. Answer. Fair enough. Fair enough. Speaking of having no kids, have you, you had a vasectomy. You've been talking about having a vasectomy. Yes. Oh, How yes, was it? Yes, Is it yes. working? It's, uh, it's it's working so far so good. But um, that was one of the ones where I think blokes, that's what we have, don't we? We have testicles and a penis and we rely everything on them things. They give. They bring us joy, happiness, <laughs> 
they get us through a lot of difficult times. <laughs> so to inter- so to, so oh, I, I, to, I see we're back to lockdown on my own. <laughs> yeah. I see we're talking about that again. <laughs> when I said seeing yeah. my pants, that is what I was alluding to, really. <laughs> so messing with them was a big deal, but I thought, right, you know, I've got three kids. Uh, I forget what I was at the time, 44, something like that, 45. And um, I thought, right, okay, that's that. But um, the, the most horrific thing about the whole process is lying on a hospital bed in, a, in the theatre, freezing cold, penis practically touching your spine. It's that <laughs> shrunken. <laughs> Shaved, right? With with just a load of female nurses looking at you, going, <laughs> "What? That's a bit of a letdown." <laughs> you know, that's that for me was the worst part. The actual when they do it, you can't feel anything. You know what I mean? It's like, you're um, yeah, you're awake. Yeah, oh, you can be put to sleep, but it's uh, you, you're better off staying awake. In fact, the doctor did say at first when he pulled the thing back, he actually went, "Oh, very nice." And for a second, I thought, "Oh," I went, "I said you've probably seen a few." And he went, "No, no." I mean, he, he said, "I mean, you shaving job where you shave your views." <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was on. A, I thought he was on about the size of my penis. Did yeah, you literally? Did nice. you literally go? Oh, thanks, mate. I went, oh. Hey, I said, well, you've seen a few. And he went, no, no, you've done a good job. Uh, I was like, oh, fucking hell. I've had right, it done. Okay, you know that, don't yeah. you? I had it done. I didn't know you'd you had it done. done. Fucking, he shit me right up. I met him. We were doing celebrity juice together. And I said, I'm about to have it done. He went, oh, fucking, oh, told me some right horror stories. <laughs> oh, me mate, he said, one thing, one thing you don't do. He said, don't, don't masturbate. Remember that story about your mate, his bollocks went massive. Right. So, so, so my mate, right. Now, you, everyone's got their mates who are a bit odd. Mm-hmm. Right. So when something mad happens to them, you go, yeah, well, obviously it's him. And this mate of mine, he went for a vasectomy. He was only 32, I think, at the time. Just didn't want kids. He wasn't even with anyone. He went, I'm having a vasectomy. So he goes to the hospital. He did a vasectomy. Doctor says to him, right, now, you don't don't have, uh, you know, ejaculate or anything for at least six weeks. Right, you've got to let it all heal, everything else. So six weeks was the time. So he's like, right, okay. Goes home. That afternoon, <laughs> he's walked in. He said, how often do you get hosed to yourself? Put the internet on, had a wank. Right? I went, that afternoon? I said, fair enough if you'd have gone a week. And, and he's gone, hey, that's too soon. But, like, the fucking stitches were still in. Right? So he's gone home. He's had a wank straight away. Right? I said, how was it? He went, there was a bit of blood in it, but it were all right. I went, oh, my God. <laughs> Anyhow, two days later... His testicle, and I'm not joking, went that big, just one of them. Because he turned up this night, we were out for a curry. He had these baggy pants on, he had a bowling ball. And I went, what the <laughs> fuck's that? And he went, oh, it's, it's gone. It's all gone wrong. So, oh sake of going home, cracking one off that afternoon, for a, 12 months, one year after that, every week for a year, he had to go to the doctors to get a needle in his testicles <sighs> to get them drained. For a year, oh. Oh. I'm like, no wank is worth that. <laughs> no, 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 it's not worth that. And what's even madder about that, right? So about three years after that, my other mate goes for a vasectomy at the same hospital, and the doctor's talking to him, and the doctor says doesn't doesn't know the connection, and he says, uh, you know, you mustn't, don't ejaculate, don't do anything for at least six weeks, because let me tell you, we had one lad who did it on the day, and it was a disaster. And it was his fucking mate, he didn't know. We were talking about my mate, who this lad knew. And he's like, was it such a body? He went, it was, do you know? He went, oh yeah, he went, oh, he's crazy. You, crazy. you don't want to be the person who's you, who ends up being used as the yeah. like, cautionary yeah. tale <laughs> of a sectomy. Yeah. That's not a good yeah. thing. Well, I, I'm, I know, doing, I'm I going on Celebrity so... Juice, and I'm sat talking to... And I said, you've had it done. I said, I've booked myself in. I'm having, I'm, I'm having it done. He was like, oh, fucking telling me all these stories. Oh, fucking needle. Like, oh, I'm shitting Hilarious. myself. <laughs> no, but I'll tell you one thing Amazing. he didn't mention. There is something that happens. I was lay there, 
just like you said, and there was a female nurse to my left, right, and the, and this uh, the bloke over me genitals, and uh, and she's <laughs> and honest to God, you think they wouldn't mention it if they've ever seen you on the chat? Because I'm I'm sort of hoping. I hope she's never seen me on anything. I hope. Yeah. And she was like, used to love two pints. It's a great one. Oh yeah, we used to sell oh, pop. No. Well, yeah, whilst that's looking the, at me, that's the worst one to have mentioned. I'm thinking, well. I'm thinking, yeah. she's obviously imagined at some point because you know, as Gaz, you know, we used to have my gear out. She's probably thinking, she probably thought it was a lot better than it is. And she's looking at and she's going, oh, yeah, we used to oh, have a light dear. giggle at that. And she's looking at me cock the whole time. And I know this is what she does. She, <laughs> so she sees them all day. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm thinking, yeah. please get a bit of blood in yeah. it. Please be a bit more impressive. But as he yeah. says, it's the least Mate, sexy someone... feel and it's shrivel up time. But the worst thing is, I'll tell you this, it's that you didn't mention, you can smell it burning. You can smell it burning. You can smell burning <gasps> flesh because they've oh, got to. Got that. They've got to singe that. the ends of the tubes. They've got to. They, they sort of burn Ooh. the ends off. I know. I know why that's happened for you. I know that's you. You went NHS. I went private. <laughs> Fuck off! <laughs> Did you not no, have the no, flamethrower? No, no, they, they used a laser on me. No, 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 uh, uh, Paddy. Um, we went to see Jimmy Carr, well. who's branched out doing that as well as his hair transplants. <laughs> Jimmy Carr did Will's vasectomy. I'm, t- I'm serious. <laughs> He's got his tax bill to pay. There's nothing more sobering than smelling your own bollocks. You should never smell your own bollocks. <laughs> on fire. You should never yeah, smell no, it. No, I was no, like, I what's that smell? And it's like, uh, it's I'm burning not, flesh. Not burning anyway. It's burning. It's, it's your own bollocks. Will, it's, no, it's, Will, it's, oh, it's terrible. Oh, the smell. And it stays Will, with you. Obviously... You've got kids, Will. We know that. I've got kids and we know Ralph hasn't. Now, obviously, you and Ralph are really tight. Have you never tried to... Because what I, if I were Ralph and having a part of my own, I'd be going, you should have kids, Ralph. You'd be a great dad. You've got a legacy you can leave to your kids. and I'd be doing all that just to lull him in. <laughs> oh, yeah, so we no. can, so we can get the misery. There's have you done that with him? Have you There's tried not a the chance. Tricks? Just... I've had all that before I had kids. My mates are going, it's the best thing that will ever happen to you. And mate, I'm going, oh, I'm, honestly, I'm doing it. I'm all, doing my mates, it. all my mates have done it. They've, they've, yeah. they've, for, for the last two, three years, as they've all sort of yeah. fallen fallen by the wayside and sort of their lives yeah. are ruined, they're all like, mate, kids is the best thing ever. I'm like, yeah, whatever. You had to move away and get in a, <laughs> live in a tiny fucking house because you can't afford, you're fucked. Me, I'm like, I'm having a great time, thank you. They're all homeschooling oh, in the pandemic, the poor dear, bastards. Mate, we, I swear when, when to God, I hope. I hope he ends up having kids. Not praying. A chance. When we Not started, a I'm so happy. With when we started family. doing this podcast in lockdown, I was like, "Oh, kids, this kids this. and I said, you, "You're a bit tired." He said, "Yeah, I was up till four in the morning playing FIFA." Fucking hell! <laughs> FIFA? <laughs> Fucking FIFA! Exactly. <laughs> what Will doesn't thing? even remember FIFA. <laughs> Fucking hell! <laughs> Seriously, he's not got a clue. Oh not God! Exactly. Clue. Arrest my it's case. Bad. The only bloke who I know who hasn't got kids is, is my mate who, who who cracked one off on the day's vasectomy. And I look <laughs> at him, he's, a, he's the same age as me, he's not a line on his face, always happy, does about six holidays a year. Yeah. Tosser! <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. It really upsets yeah. me. Well, I'm in Miami at the moment and Will's sort of, every night we, we, we do these podcasts and Will's like, hey, what are you going to do this week? And I'm like, whatever I want. Because <laughs> I can. Because <laughs> I don't have kids. It's this is great. What I, want. I didn't know this, Pad. That, that, haven't you just built an house recently as well? That must have been stressful as fuck building an house. Well, I uh, we moved into the new gap. As you can see, there's wires hanging down. It's still not done yet. But right. um, I moved. I moved house at Christmas in the middle of a global pandemic oh, with Christ. kids. No, so you can nice. imagine no. the stress no. levels. No. But I just, I just, I've been renting for about three years and I just wanted to get in this house. It's, it's taken forever to, to be renovating everything else. And now we're in it, even though it's not finished, at least it's mine. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And I'm yeah. not paying rent or anything else, and it's it's mine and what. And, and and the kids' bedrooms are all done and there, and that was the main priority. You can anything else, you can work around it. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, so I'm in now, and I'm settled, thank God. But Why I love it where I am. I'm in Cheshire. Oh, yeah. darling, <laughs> Tatton Park. Nutsford. I bet you're in Nutsford, aren't you? He owns Tatton Park. You're, I'm you're, either, in, Park. you're either in Alderley Edge or Nutsford. I'm one of them. I'm one of them. <laughs> one you're of in Alderley Edge, uh, aren't you? No, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. 
I, I looked at I looked at Old Lee Edge because I didn't know anywhere about anything over here. And listen, Old Lee Edge is a bit show in it. It's a bit you know, it, it is what it is. But I where I am, it's there's a lot of greenery and it's very quiet. If I want to go for a, a night out or a beer or whatever, you can do all that in Old Lee, or you can go to Wilmslow or whatever. But but seriously, for me, work wise, being here. It's 10 minutes to the train station to London and then the train to London is an hour and 45 minutes oh, and they're cool. every 20 minutes. The airport's 15 minutes away. When I lived in Bolton, it used to take me to get to Piccadilly Station in the morning, two hours. Yeah. Jesus. Two Bolton, hours yeah. if you had to get on an early train. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. And the kids' school's here, so everything's kind of so handy around here. I, I, I love it. All my family's still Bolton. I still go back there. But uh, I really like it over here. I think I read somewhere. Uh, it's, just, it's kind of a really good decision. I think I read somewhere. I don't know if it's true. Because I, people, you know, I always sort of think about this. As, as when I grew up, and I'm not, I mean, we think we're all quite similar. I don't know about Ralph, but you know, I grew up in a working class background, council house and all that, <laughs> and, and, and I'm proud of it. And, yeah. and, you, and it's like, you, you want to teach your kids to say morals of how to respect things. But I, I, I read somewhere that your daughter said, uh, well, where's the swimming pool going, Dad? What 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 happened with that is I was <laughs> renting for a few years and we had to keep renting different houses because once the tenancy ran out, it, you're up to the landlord if you renewed it or not, so you'd have to find a different house. So I saw this house that was up for rent and it had a swimming pool in it. And I thought, how often me growing up exactly the same as what you said then, yeah. Will, double nothing. Yeah. Never in a million years did I think I'd ever been in a position to go in a house where it had a swimming pool in. So I thought, I'm renting it. I'm going to let the kids enjoy that because yeah. I, I, that's something I never had. And I thought, I'm only renting it. I'll do it. So, And I'm glad because I rented it and they were never out of the pool for about two months. After that, not interested. Yeah. Just typical yeah. kids. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's like, at first, we want to be in it all the time. Nothing. So I'm like, right, well... <laughs> So when we were getting this other house renovated, I'd drive up with the kids and they'd like look at it, you know, through it like a building site and they'd be like, and my daughter went, what's swimming pool in this house? And I was like, fucking hell, that's what she thinks now. (laughs) She thinks because last house is had in, that's what happens. I'm like, that doesn't happen in houses. That's like not a normal thing. But again, that's where... To be fair to the the innocence of childhood, they they're not aware of stuff like that. You know no. what I mean? If you have a motorbike in your kitchen, they're gonna think that's what happens Everyone in the a kitchen. Motorbike a motorbike, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you yeah. know, it was like just when she said it, I remember going, "Fuck it, Al." What has happened to my life where these are the kind of that, questions man. the kids There's are nothing asking? Nothing you can do because your kids are victims of what you know of their surroundings. So you couldn't take them and go right. Go you're going to go and live on this council estate until you're 18, and then you can come and live with me. You can't do that. You know, it's, <laughs> you, can't, you can't give them what you had, can you? Because you, you want to give like, them the I best like the choice yeah. of the word victims, though. <laughs> I, like kids are, I like the choice of the word victims. Well, you know I thought you were going to say kids are a mean, product I'm, of I'm their meant, surroundings. I'm meant a product. But you went, kids are victims of their surroundings. Like, what are you doing to them? No, I mean, a product <laughs> of their environment. You know, I want my kids to appreciate things more, but at the same time, I want to give them the best of everything. It's very hard to juggle as a parent. It's, you know what I mean? It's Yeah, I remember, I remember when I was younger, like you say, you didn't have anything, but every now and again, you'd come across a lad whose family were doing well. And I used to do, I remember this lad, and he was the first guy I knew who had a car and everything else. And he used to treat this car like shit. I used to remember mm-hmm. looking at him thinking, God, if I if I yeah. was bought that car off my parents, I'd be polishing it. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be yeah. it'd be like looked at but because he kind of it to him it was just normal. And he were like, you know, and I just thought, God, what a tool. So I think if if you're in a position to provide for your children like that, you're lucky enough. I think it's okay, but make as long as they appreciate yeah. it and they yeah. look after it. Yeah. I think it's when they totally blase by it and they're spoiled yeah. and totally. just wreck everything. You know, you, is, you know is, yourself, you're not going to yeah. come home, Will, and your kids aren't going to bloody throw the Xbox across the room and smash it because they appreciate they've got it, you know what I mean? Exactly. So it's exactly. just about kind of having that 
angle on it, really. This is the kind of thing I worry about as well, and then I realise I don't have to. <laughs> Exactly. He's the twat throwing the thing across the room. He's the kid still. Yeah, exactly. He's the one throwing yeah. his PlayStation. I'm treating the car like shit. Don't like, ever. Exactly. I'm driving past the kids. I'm driving past kids smashing PlayStations going, ah, <laughs> ah, but you wish you had the ball to do this. <laughs> hey, I remember in my school, I remember in my school, Tim, I was about 12 or 11 or 12 and Tim Baines, Tim Baines' dad worked in America. And because yeah. he worked in America, every time he came back from America, he probably bought, bought him a gift or whatever. And I remember Tim Baines had both a Sega Game Gear and wow. a pair of Reebok Pump trainers. Fuck and I was off. like, oh. I, I remember for about a year being obsessed and, and my mind was blown at the idea that somebody could be so lucky to have a Game Gear and Reebok Pump trainers. Jeez, that was, that was the level. Yeah. It's, it's and now crazy. it's about a pool. I remember, I remember yeah, I remember <laughs> going into a, a mate's house when I was a kid and his mum and dad, I was going around for tea, and his mum and dad put the tea out on on a table. And I'm like, what's that? <laughs> out of my house, I had it on my lap. Yeah. I used to have my tea on a plate on my fucking lap <laughs> in front of telly. Yeah. And they were sat at a dinner table, and I was, I honestly was like, whoa, this is yeah. fucking fancy. This is a bit this much, is, yeah. This is next level now, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it's just, it's just, but again, when, when I'm, it's funny we're doing this book at the minute and, and revisiting all the memories from my childhood. It, it's a bit cliche saying it, but it's true. Like, we go, we were poor, but we were happy. But I, yeah. I genuinely believe, you know, I was. I look back at it. Yeah. And even though I didn't have material things, I always, I was always laughing. Yeah. I was yeah. always out with my mates. Yeah. And even though we didn't add, any, add, add anything, there was always... My me, me mum always did my tea for it, you know. So we yeah. weren't kind of extreme poverty. We just, like most people, didn't have, you know, any surplus money or anything at all, you know. But but I never I felt like I missed out on anything. You know what yeah. I mean? I still had a good time growing up. Yeah. So it, it's like I remember going to one of my first girlfriends. I went to her house and uh, I were having a shower. And I was looking around, and she she passed me this uh, shower gel. It was like that squirty foam stuff. And I'm like, fucking hell. Because I swear to God, oh, yeah, all my that, life yeah. growing up, we had washing up liquid in the bath. I never <laughs> really? knew what sh- I never knew what shower gel was. I never knew what shampoo was. Wow. It was fucking... <laughs> Wash- and it wasn't furry either. It was <laughs> some stuff my mum, because she was a cleaner at the local bingo hall, she'd bring home from the bingo hall. So it was yeah. like in a vat that big. Yeah. I thought you were going to say it was the... the um, I thought you were going to say it was uh, the scratchy bar of soap. That's why I, I, we never had shower gel either. I had the bar of soap was about that big. It was a fucking sliver. You could have... Sh- it was like in posh yeah. restaurants where they shave Parmesan off. Yeah. Yeah. That sort of stuff. Oh, no. You used to scratch you. I think it scraped the fucking mud off you rather than clean you with actual soap. Say, I, that that were luxury to me. That had yeah. been luxury. But yeah, uh, yeah it's in my eyes. Of me. And I used to think that was like just the norm because we didn't have the money for those kind of things. Know, my yeah. mum brought me up on her own. It was just me and her. You know, so it's like, we're getting our half expected to throw pots in with it. <laughs> but it's, um... Wait, are you an only <laughs> child? Yeah, I am. I've got I've got an older brother, but he he was never brought up with me because right. he was brought up by my granddad because uh, my mum didn't have any money. So my granddad helped bringing him up. So when I came along, I think he might have been about, when I was born, he's probably he were about 12 13 somewhat like that he's, he's older right, than right. me so uh I, I know him now you know we made up for it over years but growing up i never saw any any siblings like that no. so it's weird no. when you find out that you've got brothers and sisters here there and everywhere i don't know why that surprised me i don't know why it should surprise me but i i don't know i just you're very very i mean i was gonna say you're very sociable but that implies that only children aren't sociable i didn't mean that i don't, I don't know yeah. i just got the impression of your childhood i imagined you like rough and tumble with your brothers and all that kind of thing but no, no but it's like i said to you you know they were always my mates were always in the house and i was always right. in my mates houses you know you always slept over each other's houses or i you know i fucking i used to sleep at my mate's house and i thought we were poor his mum they never even had carpets or yeah. toilet roll. Yeah, so yeah, I'd stay yeah. at my mate's house, it'd be wooden floorboards, a fucking old bit of newspaper for wiping your ass on. And we never even slept in his bed. We used to sleep in his garden. 
fuck no. no. Under a makeshift fucking thing, we knocked up because it would just seemed a bit better. And, and again, you're young, and it's more of an an, an adventure. Yeah. So I was yeah. always in and around stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was I wasn't like a an only child where I was like felt lonely. Yeah. Because yeah. and where I was brought up in Bolton as well, it was very much very the, the social thing then was. Uh, I don't know it was where, uh, where you two were, but it was like everyone would stand out in front of their house. It would tear his streets. Yeah, so yeah, there was yeah. always a lady or someone out with a cup of tea and a fag yeah. chatting to neighbour across road and all that. So there was just always stuff going on. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, same, so... same. Pa- right, Paddy, listen, mate. Um, this... Yo. I'm taking up a lot of your time, but we want to talk about... I know I've got I've got something. I, I'm very happy to see people that I know do well. Like you know what I mean. I see my mates do well. And Ralph doing definitely power. Well done, mate. You know whatever. There's all there's, there's one time when I saw something about you and I thought you twat. And I thought, <laughs> what a bastard. And it was when I heard you got Top Gear. I thought that's the gotta it's be a dream <laughs> job, hasn't fucking it? Dream, dream job. job. <laughs> Everybody. I thought. I wonder who they're gonna get in. I opened the paper and I thought you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> and I've never spoke to you about it, uh, but my God, mate, I don't know how you can put it into words, but how did that feel? I mean, how did that come about? Or And I'm working with Freddie, you mate, Well, a bit of banter. Yeah, I think I think the thing with Top Gear, not dissimilar to that, what I was talking about with Phoenix Knights, it was such a long process because I knew I went down... It's mad, but it's all cloak and dagger with Top Gear back then, so... I think Clarkson had done the show, then Chris Evans had taken over, he left, and it was Matt LeBlanc and Chris uh, and Rory doing it. And then that went, and then they were looking for some new people. And I got a call, straight out of the blue, as, you, as your agent does, saying, uh, Luke, they've been on, seeing if you're interested. And I was like, I love cars. I've been in and around cars all my life, but I would never in a million years think about going for a job like that. You know, it's a massive show worldwide. So I was like, right. And then I had to go, they snuck me down to this military base in uh, Leicester. And it was all, what's hilarious, so it was a proper MOD place, this, and it was all top secret. And they said, like, don't go to the, the main bit at the front where the guards are. Go around it. It's like kind of like three miles to get around this base. And there's like a secret entrance. And, you know, you'll tell them this, that and the other and they'll let you in. So I go to this MOD place and it's literally soldiers with guns at the front, fucking checkpoints and all that. Like, this is a bit heavy. Drove around back. Went right around back at MOD base. Bloke. Fag. Yeah. I went, Paddy McGuinness, top gear. went, in you go. I thought, fuck me. <laughs> The front of this place, they've got they've got Andy McNabb at the front. <laughs> the fucking back, they've got Roy Cropper from Corrie. It was just like it was so, such a random thing. I was like, and I went in and uh, basically I did a little screen test with Chris Harris because Chris Harris was going to be the only person from the last crop who was staying on. So I'd never met Chris before. Got on with him straight away, instantly. Because uh, Chris is brilliant. Because he's kind of from a very, very posh family, Chris. And he's had the private school education and everything else. But those kind of people, funnily enough, as a working class person, I relate to because they're fucking just like us. They're all bonkers. Yeah, it's true. We're all the same. We, we love a party. We love a tour up. We love a good laugh. And kind of like them, 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 like so Chris's lot were like that. So I got on with him straight away. I did a little screen test with him, which was come some little driving thing. They put a few cones out. And again, in your head, you're thinking, when I were talking to the camera, I were like almost talking like uh, Jeremy Clarkson did. You know, like you yeah. just you just revert into that. You're that condition we're watching Top Gear over the years. You just start being that person because i remember just going off on a bit of a tangent freddie did the pilot or something for take me out in australia and he said in the end he said i was just copying you and he said i thought i can't fucking do this yeah. because you just know that program so well yeah, and yeah. you know how it gets done so anyhow i did it and then honestly it probably was about god 
nigh on 12 months. Really? Uh, really? So for me, because it's such a big process getting that job, it has to go stuff like you don't even think of it. It's got to go out to America and they do tests right. with, you know, and all the execs have got to look at it around the world and wow. audience research and yeah. all that, you know, it's like a proper big thing that show. So it took so long and I didn't know Freddie was in the mix for it. I didn't, all I knew, Chris was there, I did my screen test and that's all I knew about it. I didn't know anything else. So, because it took that length of time, I kind of just, forgot about it and then I was in the middle of doing this show I do like a tea time show on BBC One called Catch Point and I was up in Scotland filming it I was in my hotel and uh, my agent rang me up and just said do you remember that Top Gear thing I went fucking hell yeah I forgot about that he went they want you to do it I was like whoa wow, wow. and it was just where I was I was like oh that's massive mate but one of the oh honestly and, and then I couldn't say anything so it was still going to be months till they announced it. So I'm like really excited and really happy. Couldn't, 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 it didn't even tell anyone. So I couldn't really like Celebrate, give it the yeah. big one. And, uh, and then in the papers on the lead up to it, they kept, you know what the newspapers like, they run like sweepstakes, don't they? Who's going to be the next Top Gear yeah. post and all that? And literally, my name was never on any of them lists. And you know what the papers are like? It's odds on such a body's going to be doing it and all that. And all I'm thinking, look at it, easy going, fuck me. They have not a clue that I'm yeah. doing this job. And yeah. I think one paper had me down at something like a 1,000 to 1. You, put a, you should have told me. In you fact, I think, I think, I think, I think, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> I, 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 think, I think fucking Sherga were higher up the list than me. <laughs> so I was, I was, um, so... When it happened, it, it was kind of, I'd already had a lot of time to take it all in. And then, just another little quick story, just about Top Secret and everything else. So when they did the press launch, they said, we're going to get you down to London uh, midnight, put you in this hotel. You've got a pseudonym at the hotel. And my pseudonym was Dougie... Um, oh, it was a character I'd played in Coronation Street and they just used it as the pseudonym, Dougie, just say it's called Dougie Turner. So they said, you check in, Dougie Turner, it's all sorted out and then we get you in the morning, blacked out car to the thing and then we're going to launch you to the world's press. I'm like, right, okay, sorted. Gets to this hotel, fucking, it's one of them, odd overhead running in night time, no, make sure no one sees you. I go to hotel reception, I went, Dougie Turner. No, no Dougie Turner here. I said, no, no, it's, it's Dougie Turner. So the <laughs> manager goes in. Oh, yeah, I found it, Dougie Turner. Have you got your ID? <laughs> I went, yeah. So my ID says, says Patrick McGuinness. So I go, there you are. He went, well, that's Patrick McGuinness. I went, yeah, that's me. He went, yeah, but this is Dougie Turner. <laughs> Oh, this guy didn't have a clue who I was. He was a he was a foreign geezer. I knew straight away he didn't have a clue who I was. Yeah. And I'm going, yeah, I said it's a pseudonym. And he's like, a what? What? Like, a pseudonym. It's not it's not me. He said, Yeah, I know it's not you. I said, No, no, but it is me. I said, the name isn't me, but it is me. Hey, you cut a long story short, all this secrecy. Me driver, he wouldn't let me stay in the hotel. Me driver had to take me to a fucking Premier Inn, wrote corner. <laughs> I booked in under Paddy McGuinness. <laughs> fucking hell. <laughs> I, I, I half expected fucking Lenny Henry being bath when I checked it. <laughs> I'm like, we have a really good time. It's I, 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 I know people will be listening to this or watching it who, who turn up the roads when I go, it's graft. But it is hard work. Because when, oh, we, do the, yeah. for, when we do the foreign trips and we're in like... Nepal, and honestly, what you see, there's no like it's always us doing the driving. There's no like, uh, we're gonna just get you out for a bit and, and yeah. while we do this with someone else. So, you, 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 you're driving a car in those kind of conditions for like some days, you could be, be out with for 19 hours, Fucking and there's no hotels. It, it's it's so like the day after, you you constantly, your head's constantly muddled yeah. but when you finish it and you look at the film and you look at how they've shot it and how they've made it 
and you go, I sit back and think, fuck me. I would never in my wildest dreams think I'd have been doing that. You know, I know I am, and I'm so grateful for it. And it looks yeah. amazing because you know what I'm like. I'm the kind of person, Portugal was as far as I went. You know <laughs> what I mean? I wasn't really yeah. a traveler. And now I've been all these places, you know, camping out in the bloody jungle in Borneo and bucket list driving stuff, up in Nepal, it, all these places. Oh, it is, it is, honestly. And the stuff I've seen, I think, God, I'm so fortunate to be doing this. But luckily, we have a good laugh as well, and all three of us. A bit like when, like us, you know, if this weren't on a podcast now and we were sat in a bar having yeah. a beer, us three, we'd be exactly the same like exactly so we're having a laugh and a chat. Yeah. And you get people like that who you just get on with. And I was just lucky that all three of us got on straight away. So, and it's working really well for them. So there long is, may it continue. There is one, um, there is one thing I, have, I wanted to ask you, um, and I know a lot of people will want to know. Um, it was when I, because I love Top Gear. I absolutely love it. I tape it, record it, watch it. I love it. Always have done. Um, watching yeah. you on it. I pissed myself laughing. Great banter. I know Fred is great banter. But it has to be yeah. when you crash that Lamborghini. Fucking hell. Oh, yeah. oh, well, honestly. the mad thing with that was oh, me, the me, mad me, thing with that was uh, tight for you. Freddie, yeah, Freddie would always get the stick off us for crashing cars, right? That he became the person who crashed the cars all the time. So we're always fucking getting into going. Crashed another one, have you? The thing with the Lamborghini, what the maddest thing about that, which you won't see properly, in, uh, how it's done in the uh, in the series. We were on this road in uh, Yorkshire and it was pissing down. But we weren't driving fast. It was literally, if you're ever going to have a crash, it, it, from the stuff they have us doing, that would have been the bottom of the list where you'd have expected anything. Yeah. So we're just driving on, there's a director behind us, another car tracking us. And I'm just basically doing me chat to camera. And there was oil on the road. And it was just because it's a. a an old motor, there's no ABS, there's no nothing like that. So it just span out. Now, because they made a fiberglass, there was no, it didn't hit anything, it just went into a field. But because the field's bumpy, it just literally decimated the bottom of the car, yeah. ripped the panels off, <laughs> smashed the sides in. So you get out, because I, I got out, like, it span, went off, and I was like, yeah. oh, fucking hell, right, I'll get out. I honestly thought, it. I didn't expect it to loop like it did. And when I saw the damage, I was like, oh, Jesus Christ, no. Yeah, man. It, you know, it was, and it's it just one of the things, it's just an accident. But it was, it, but, was, but it was not, even the guy who, who owned that car, yeah, but the guy who owned it, he was there watching, you know, he, he loaned us it, and it, it, it was just an act, it was just a, an unforeseeable thing. So I bet he was delighted, though, wasn't he? <laughs> I bet he was what? going, he, he, oh, he no was, worries. Honest, honestly, he was absolutely good as gold. And he said, uh, yeah. Listen, if I'd have been trying to handbrake it at 90 around the corner, he'd have probably been pissed off. But because he saw it was just one of them weird freak oil on the road, it happens. But if it happens in a modern car, you won't spin off because you've yeah. got all the bloody bells and whistles on them. But on these yeah. things, they're so mm. powerful and everything else. But it, it was just one of them. And I was gutted because I love the car. And yeah. I was just going to take it to the... Uh, the big runway to race it with Chris and Fred and I never got to do it. In fact, I ended up in a, a Skoda in the end. <laughs> but it's just, that's that's just how it is, isn't it? You know, it, it, it was my first one on there. But I, in a way, I was gutted. It wasn't more spectacular because the way the press reported it, it were like, it was the worst crash ever. Yeah. But actually on the day, it, it, so I rang my wife straight away and said, this is what's happened. Because I knew, I thought, as soon as the press get hold of anything, it was yeah. Fred was on the front page of the Sun in a hundred and twenty mile per hour crash on a rocket thing. It was effectively doing ten miles per hour lay on a skateboard. Oh yeah, yeah. But yeah. on That's the paper, horrible. it was like a rocket. So you know, and if your family read that, they get worried. But you see, so you've got to kind of go look. You know, yeah. well, especially you know what happened with Richard like, Make a bit more out of it and everything else. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. No, that was a proper serious crash. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? That was a proper serious crash, but... Uh, well, it helped yeah, sell his so book anyway, so, you know. It, every cloud. You know what I mean? <laughs> as, Stuart, looked, as Stuart it, Lee it said, I bet, I bet was. as he was lying there, he thought, ooh, I might be able to write a bestseller about this. 
exactly. <laughs> Stuart Lee's fucking thing about those three in Top Gear is my favourite bit of stand up ever. It's killer. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's brutal, that, isn't it? It's, it's amazing. Brutal. It's amazing. He's, he's, uh, but uh, yeah, so it was just one of the things that will. It just happens, but then you just dust yourself down and yeah, get Yeah, of course, it, mate. I just felt for you because I know, I know how gutted you would have been because that bloke, obviously, it's his, it's you're the collector's item, man. Yeah. Like the Diablos, you know, you don't see him yeah. on every corner. So, yeah. no, I just felt for you. No, I was. I fucking, was. I, I, even I, less so now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's one less well, corner you it. see him on. When I, when I got out the car and, and loot, I did, I was apps, I was mortified because... I was thinking of the, of the bloke, because I were totally fine. No one were injured. It was just a freak thing. But I were gutted. I thought, oh, but like, because he knew the situation. He was like, honestly, he was absolutely yeah. good as gold. And I just thought, oh, I still felt bad. I still felt bad. It took me a while to get over that, because I was thinking about the car and thinking about him. But he just, uh, he, he was sound. He was right as rain. Well, mate, listen. And, um, right, listen. We've taken up a lot of your yeah. time, but we have to do. Yeah. We have to do one last little. You have well, to do. I've a got quiz. a couple of these. Fucking hell, he's got the readers on. Well, do you know uh, what? These, these look are, at him with these his are pins. me little. Uh, these are ones that me little red Ronnie Crees came for a fucking shootout. Um, I'm the. Uh, <laughs> so I've got a couple of questions off Twitter. Oh, we've got some questions for you from Twitter. Is this all right? I've, I put yeah, it out there to the Twitter world. Oh, and they've, yeah. They've got, give me a couple of questions. It's all right from the yeah. public. Okay, when this is from um, Laura Jane McEwen or McEwen, uh, when is the last time you did something for the very first time? Crashed a Lamborghini Diablo. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to say. Well, we, we're Top Gear. We, uh, there's a lot of things. I got I, on the new series of Top Gear coming up. We hold on to the back of a car with titanium plates on our shoes, and it drags us up, up a runway. Wow. And we've got a stand, so it's like water skiing on tarmac at like hundred cool. mile per hour. So that's definitely. And you've never done that be before. That Fucking hell, where have you been? <laughs> no, funnily enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I've got I've, I've got another one here. Um, Emily Webster. Um, did he come up with ding dang, ding dang do, or was it a script on Max and Paddy? Did you come up with that, or was it on script? So it. The, the the actual the actual people say ding dang, but it's actually dink dank do, right. right? And that came about. There was a guy called Dave Higson, and he used to do the uh, commentary on Book Wanderers games, and he'd do it himself. It was like all oh, that little handheld mic. He'd be on the trains going to, and he'd, he'd interview people. And his catchphrase was, "It's going to be all right, ding dang do." Right. So it just stuck in my head. And when we we're doing Phoenix Nights, I just decided to say it, and it stuck. Okay. Uh, well, this leads on to this next one. I've, I've got a... a question for you. Go on. I've got a question for you. What is that? What, what the fuck is that? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Why are you on a plate? <laughs> you are you a royal family know. now? What's that? Because, because, like most people on plates, I am fucking royalty, Ralph. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be lucky if you get yourself on a fucking cup, son. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm trying. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, the, the we'll last to print our own. <laughs> the last one is from uh, David on Twitter, and he says, "Any plans for a new series of Max and Paddy? I've had loads of these. Everyone's just saying, any more Max and Paddy? Is there any plans for that?" Yeah, I, I've always said with that, we we had a, we have ideas down, but that is like, I, you know, I'd always love to do that, but just the way things are and work and time and space, it, you know, what it's like filming a TV series. You've got to kind of blank out twelve months of your life. You know, and uh, so you know, you, they, they might be, they might not be. I, I can't give a, a de- yeah, definitive mate, we get answer it, we on get that. It all the time with um, yeah, two, two pints, pints and it's yeah. like, yeah, it's, yeah. We'd it's, love to it's do hard it. to explain We'd to people to who, who aren't in the business like how difficult it is yeah. to get everyone in a room at the same time. Of course, it is. Of course, it is. Well, listen, yeah. mate. Thank you so much. It's, it's, it's not. It's not as easy. It's not as easy as that, is it? When people sort of look at it and they don't, they go, "Oh, just do another one of them." Why don't you just do that? Yeah, it's going to be written for a kick off. But anyhow, yeah. Hey, so, nice right, talking you... to you, boys. Hold on, we've hold got on. one more Not thing. Yeah, you ready for a bit Go of a on. cheeky quiz? We got a pub quiz. One minute. Oh, one minute. Yeah, one minute. Pub quiz. Your money's worth. You get your money's worth. You two, don't you? Fucking, we're, mate, we're, we're ringing this one dry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> well, listen. Right. Uh, every... <laughs> we know. We know how much it costs yeah. normally. <laughs> every guest has to do it, and we had. Um... You had. A, you had an hour before we started this. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Manford on last week, uh, and he got four in a minute. So all they are the questions that are related to famous Paddies or Patricks. 
that you might know, and it's in one minute. Or Pats. Or right. Pats. Yeah. <clears throat> and you'll know when your timer runs out when you hear this noise. <laughs> Fart gun. Um, all right. <laughs> right, so... Right. right. Let me set okay, we'll tell to go. And, and there will be a winner at the end of the series, yeah. Paddy, so there's a lot to play for. You can win a case of beer when we get a sponsor. Fucking right. hell, here we go. Non, non-branded. Non-branded. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Time, right. Right. Hopefully Red Stripe will hear this and they'll come on board. <laughs> okay. It'll have to be a minute because I've, I've just seen kids pull up in car. It's like, go on. They're not driving, right, by quick. the way. You've right. got one so minute. Your minute here we go. starts one. now. Go. Who was the presenter of kids' TV show, show Funhouse? Pat Sharp. What, yes, what's Postman's Pat's surname? Pass. Uh, what was the nickname of, uh, what was the surname of Paddy in Phoenix Nights? Oh, shit. What was Patrick Swayze's biggest grossing film? Uh, no. no, Ghost. What was Patrick Stewart's character's oh. name in Star Trek? Picard. Yep. Uh, yes, I'll give you that. Name three famous Patrick footballers. Fucking uh, Patrick Clivert. Uh, yes. Oh, I've gone. Pass. Go on. Go on. Next, next one. <laughs> Which character was in EastEnders was known for wearing a massive earrings? Pat Butcher. Yeah. What's commonly grown in a paddy field? Rice. Yes. And number 10, where did the name Patrick come in the top 100 boys' names of 2020? Right. That's it. Right. Very is good, this mate. A is this a starting so you finish? Yes, you can have a go yes. at this last where one. Did pa- where did the... Then- where did the Patrick name Patrick come in the top 100 boys' names of 2020? I'll give it to you to the nearest 10. Oh, right. Okay, then. Well, I'll go I'll go 30. <laughs> no, it didn't make the list. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking wanker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what like, kind of a question? Po- that's, more of a, that's more of a character assassination. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a bit, yeah. <laughs> Well, so Paddy. wait, you, you passed on Postman Pat's surname. It was Clifton. Who knew that? I didn't know that. Fuck um, no idea. Fa- famous footballers, you could have had uh, Vieira, Patrick Vieira, Aubameyang, Patrick Berger, Paddy Kenny, Patrick Bamford, Pat Nevin, Pat Jennings, and plenty of others. But I got six. Do you Paddy, know what? You, as soon as you stayed saying, I thought, I'll get this. You've got well, six. Yeah. You've got six, and Jason Manford got four. So at the moment, you're in the lead, son. Well done. Nailing it. Fantastic. Nailing it. Who have you got on yes. next? We don't know yet. We don't know. Well, listen, we'd we'll, we'll like to keep people who's got an interesting name. <laughs> 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 listen, thanks so much for coming on, Sunshine. Right, boys. Mate, thanks very much. Lads, it's been great seeing you both and having a, having a bit of a catch up as well. I've enjoyed that. Yeah, thanks Top very man. much, mate. Cheers, Cheers really boys. Appreciate it. Right. Stay, stay, Love okay, to the family. Stay, stay safe. Love out of this fucking thing. Eh? Cheers, boys. <laughs>